Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this online lecture curriculum on A to Z in implant dentistry. My name is Sasha Jovanovic. Today's lecture is focusing on immediate tooth replacement, and I'm going to cover two specific areas. One is the extraction site, and the second one is the healed site. Both of them with the concept of immediate function and immediate tooth replacement. Other lectures on this topic are found in the A to Z in implant dentistry as well as in the guide education library. So please I refer to those. In the evidence which we have in the literature there is quite a bit of like um, literature now available to review this topic on immediate implant placement and immediate provisionalization and finally immediate restoration. If we look at some of the papers they're concentrating really on how immediate tooth replacement can help us to support tissues as well as in extraction sites as well as in the healed ridges and always utilizing this immediate loading concept to like support the tissues. One of the areas which is very much looked at, and you can see that here in the two areas of indications, you notice here that one area is the extraction site, where the implant is placed immediately into the socket to support not only the bone but also the soft tissue. And secondly, it is placing an implant into a healed ridge where the implant is placed into the native area of bone and then supporting the bone as well as the soft tissue. Let's look at first the extraction site. One of the most important areas really in finding the right case to do this on is really doing the right diagnosis. Um, many cases today will utilize the combination from either clinical ridge mapping, so probing the site for available bone surrounding the socket wall, or we will utilize a dental CT scan to find the available bone quantity as well as the available bone quality for implant placement. Most important for diagnosis is really that all the socket walls are intact, specifically the buccal bone, because when we're looking at implant placement into an extraction site, we're really dealing here with preserving this buccal bone plate for the purpose of preserving the gingival margin as many of these cases are anterior maxillary cases and of course also preserving the interproximal gingival papilla. Bone height diagnosed upon radiograph needs to be at least 10 millimeters. Most patients, especially when we're dealing with the maxilla, especially when we're dealing with the anterior maxilla, have sufficient bone below the apex and uh, we will place an implant on average about 3 millimeters past the apical extent of the root. Not always necessary, but that's very often done. Implant stability is important for diagnosis. Our implant stability for immediate extraction site placement with an immediate temporization, we need at least about 30 newton per centimeter measured through the drill unit at the time of implant placement. And we're looking really for protected occlusion. So when we're looking at a patient, we really, really would like uh, to have minimal contact in occlusion, minimal lateral forces, and we'll also like to have, just if uh, at all possible, just there will be a minimal amount of contact in the interproximal area. So this works really well. So now let's look at what the topics are for when we combine flapless versus flap elevation. Here you can see the two uh, different types of cases. On the left hand side you see an implant, a tapered implant, being inserted into an extraction site, an immediate extraction site, and you can see how we maintain the flapless area. On the right photograph of a clinical case, also in the anterior maxilla, you can see how a flap had to be elevated due to the occurrence of buccal bone loss. So here when we place the implant um, we couldn't just do a flapless case, we really had to do a situation where we had to raise a flap. So there's a beautiful paper from Tito Manku out of England 
which was published a few years ago, where he gave kind of a little bit of a run through of like when is it indicated to do surgery, implant surgery without a flap, so placing the implants atraumatically, and then secondly, when do you use a flap elevation. So let's just go through this for a moment. You see that flapless procedures really don't allow any bone defects. Um, if necessary, that bone grafting has been done, it really needs to be just like, you know, minimal. So the bone grafting is minimally required. So maybe just placing a bone graft into the socket to support the bone. You'll see that in a moment. We need to have sufficient, adequate, soft tissue, which is thick enough. Usually we're talking about more than two millimeters thickness, and a gingival margin needs to be like, you know, at the right uh, apical coronal extent. We would like to have it at least at the same level as the adjacent tooth or the tooth we're trying to simulate. In most cases with a flapless, we can do a single stage implant placement. So that means we can do a one stage healing abutment placement, or we can do a two stage, which is like submerged, but then like really it would be pushing it over to again like more of a healing. So our preferred type of case scenario would be single stage, stage with a healing abutment, or a single stage with an abutment and a temporary restoration. Immediate provisionalizations, of course, are also done, and these are done when the cases can allow immediate loading concepts. Now we move over to flap elevation. What, what cases do we really do flap elevation? Usually it means that we're like a little bit unsure of the amount of tissue available. It means that we have diagnosed either through the radiograph or through clinical means or combination that a bone defect is present. This could occur also after a tooth has been extracted. Bone grafts are required, and usually this means that also we have to raise a larger flap to close this. Inadequate soft tissue means that we, we want to raise a flap so we can potentially add a soft tissue. Most cases we'll place a straight or a tapered implant in these indications. And this can be done either one stage with a healing abutment, but in most cases where grafting is necessary, we'll apply the two-stage procedure. So we'll submerge it, allow the bone graft to heal, allow the soft tissue to heal, and then we'll use a temporary restoration, which is a provisional fixed partial denture, or even could be a partial without any kind of loading on the site. So here again, in summary, the same type of case scenarios. Here you can see in this particular um, uh, clinical case where the implant is being placed, we're not really intending any grafting. So when we don't intend any grafting, we really like are doing the following concepts of like um, patient treatment. 